Can I be honest? I'm a little bit tired of hearing about AI this and AI that all day, every day. But, but Photoshop's generative features are slowly, slowly winning me over. And that's because they're saving me time, they're making my life easier, and they are just a lot of fun to play around with. At least until AI takes over the world and destroys us all. But until that day, we're going to use Photoshop's beta to look at four ways that these AI-driven features can make your life easier too. So first up, we have Generative Expand. And side note, since recording this video, these AI features are now out of beta and in the latest update for Photoshop. And I'm going to start with a lovely portrait photo and select the Crop tool. Then up here, make sure that Generative Expand is selected, and once it is, you can extend this from any side. So I'm going to extend this from both sides holding Alt or Option, then press Enter or Return, and it will generate the rest of the image. And then from the Properties panel, I can see those variations, and I can change how I view them, and I can now click through these and see which one I like the most. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. They're all pretty decent actually, but I think I'm going to go with number two. Yeah, that one. Now, if I zoom in a bit closer, you can see there is a white vehicle on the road. So I'm going to select the lasso tool and draw a selection around this. There we go, very rough. And there's also a motorbike over here, a motorbike with a rather long shadow. So I'm going to select the bike and the shadow. And now that I've made the selection, I appear to have lost my contextual taskbar. Um, this does happen sometimes. Hey, it's a beta. If it does, go to window and down to contextual taskbar and it should pop back up. Click generative fill, leave the box blank and then click generate. And by leaving the box blank, most of the time Photoshop will just remove the selection as you can see here. Okay, so now it's time to use generative fill. So I'm going to make a selection again somewhere over here in the hillside and then I'm going to use generative fill to type in exactly what I would like to appear here. So let's go with castle ruins on hillside. And let's see what it comes up with. Oh, that's pretty good. And there's a few versions we can click through and you can see all of these take the lighting from the scene into account as well. And if you're not happy with the result, you can keep clicking generate until you get something you're happy with. Now let's try and make a selection over here and I'm going to try and add something into the foreground. So let's try something a bit more challenging and let's type blurred grass in foreground. Oh, what's it gonna come up with? You never know. Uh, well, that is definitely not grass. Um, we have a few variations that uh, are also not grass. This last one looks like a stool. Okay, let's quickly speed through a few more generations and see if I can get some actual grass. And if you can't get quite what you're looking for, remember to play around with the prompts to get different results. And as you can see in this example, I actually got some grass and some mountainside, which is more than I wanted, but I do quite like it. Next, let's take a look at a technique to use AI to stitch two separate photos together and we'll call this technique generative stitch. So in this example, I have two separate images of guys looking longingly at clouds. Ah, <sighs> clouds. And if I hide the top layer, you can see this is the setup that I'm working with. So first of all, I'm going to select the bottom layer, go to image, adjustments, and select match color. And this is a very quick and easy way to try and match the colors and the feel of one image to another. So the source is going to be the current document and I'm going to choose which layer to match to. And this isn't too bad. Sometimes it does a better job than others, but now I'm going to use the marquee tool to make a selection between the two images. And this is quite honestly mind blowing. So click generative fill, type nothing and press generate. And yes, Photoshop is going to generate a stitch between the two images. And yes, some of these are definitely better than others. And yes, we do have mountain in the sky with the clouds and we could generate new mountains and a new sky, but let's use the object selection tool and some sample all layers. Now I can use this to select the backpack, the subject, uh, his head, <laughs> you don't want to forget that. And now I'm going to select the other subject as well. And here it's trying to select too much of the foreground. So I'm going to switch to the quick selection tool and use this for the second part of the selection. So again, let's check sample all layers. And then I'm going to select the foreground nice and quickly. So all of the rocks, snow, grass, all of this stuff that they're sat on. And then I'm going to invert that selection and generate a new mountain landscape and some clouds. And as you can see, it generates exactly that. And all of this took barely a couple of minutes. Now let's try something a bit more out there. Let's make a selection in this empty space here. And let's generate a dinosauropotamus. Like a mix of dinosaur and hippo. <laughs> what? So yeah, maybe we should just hide that layer and uh, stick to guys and clouds. Now let's try something a bit different and work on a generative portrait. So here's a lady outside with the wind blowing her hair into her face and I'm going to select the lasso tool and then make a very quick selection of her clothing. Up here, down and join. 
Now let's try and generate something different. I'm going to type red dress. OK, let's see what we get. Nice, not bad. Let's click through the different versions. I think I'll go for this one. Now let's try it again on the necklace. Let's just make that selection nice and quick. And for this new piece of jewellery, I'm going to go with diamond necklace. OK, that's very uh, diamond-esque, very sparkly. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, yeah, I think that's the one. Now let's try the earrings as well. We'll select that one and this one here that's partially hidden by her hair. So let's start with uh, red earrings to match everything else. Uh, yeah, they're OK. Actually, let's type diamond earrings. We'll go with diamond again. Nice, much better. Now let's try out on something especially challenging by very carefully selecting the hair. And for this, it's best to leave the facial features out of the selection. I mean, unless you want to generate new eyeballs or perhaps a different nose. Right, let's type blonde hair and see how we get on. Oh wow, that's not actually that bad. And if we click through a few of these, and considering the hair's blowing over her face, that's not actually that bad, even just as a starting point. Right, let's turn these layers on one by one and take a look at our final creation. And for a few minutes work, that's pretty decent. I'm happy with that. And lastly, we have generative, well, everything, because we're going to generate an entire scene completely from scratch. And this one features a space alien snail, and if that sounds totally nuts, well, that's because it is. Right, so I have a blank canvas. First of all, I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to generate a cave in space. There we go, let's see what this comes back with. Whoa, okay, let's click through these and Wow, these are pretty different. I'm going to try again. Let's see what we get this time. Uh, they're OK. Not quite the one I'm looking for. Let's try again. Oh, yeah, that's the one. OK, now let's make a selection in this space here. Lovely. And now I'm going to generate a space alien snail. No idea what this is going to give me. <laughs> oh, wow, that is definitely nightmare fuel. OK, let's do this a few more times and see if we can get ourselves a good space alien snail. This might, uh, this might take a while. OK, I'm going to settle for this fella here. Let's change that head by selecting it. And I'm going to type snail head. Uh, oh, nope, that's snail on head. Hmm, bit of snail on snail action isn't what I intended. Let's try snail antennas. Antennae? Whatever it's called. Uh, oh, there we go. I like that. He's looking at the camera. Right, let's give this fella some ziggity zaggity spikes. Let's try shark fins and see what that gives us. Mm, oh, there we go. They're kind of like thorns, but that could work. Let's try that again on the shell. And this time I'll type thorns. Maybe we'll get something similar. Oh, yeah, that's good. Nice, I like it. Now at the moment he's kind of floating, so let's give him some legs. Let's type insect legs. Oh, oh no. Oh, that is disgusting, but also perfect. But even though this entire space alien snail scene has been generated by AI, it is far from finished. And there's a video on screen now that will teach you 13 essential techniques for photo manipulation. So give that a click and I'll see you in a sec.